What's up, everybody? Stay tuned for after question of the day. We have an extremely special guest that I can't wait to show you. Today's question of the day, though, is who is your winner in the Cigar Mile? What's up, everybody? Colin Sheehan back here with Doubling Down, and I welcome back old friend Vinny Blonde. What's happening, Vinny? Not much, Colin. Not much. Yeah, I disappeared for a bit. Uh, took a break, but here we are. It's great to have you back. We've uh, we had a little bit of a hiatus, but I'm glad to see that the guests that we've had in your place have not done much better than you. Uh, that guest oh, fantastic. Is still in the red. Still in the red. I've been able to uh, maintain the green the entire time, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, <laughs> I've been on a cold streak the last two weeks. We had a horse who I definitely thought was going to win, ended up scratching. Um, and then I missed this, the second leg. Anyways, uh, we had King <laughs> George on, and uh, we both missed. So it's all good. We're going we're gonna to get him back today. Uh, we decided to uh, bring you in for the specialty in New York. Uh, we're going to go race 8 and 9 on Saturday, December 3rd, the first race of the Daily Double. That's what we do on this show is Daily Doubles that are – Affordable for all players. The first race is the Go for One Stakes Race Eight on your card on Saturday. Vinny told me before he's got a single in this race, and in this race, when I first looked at it, to hear you had a single was surprising because to me, it's extremely competitive, uh, and you could go multiple ways. But you've got a ten to one shot as a single. Where are you going? I do. I really like love is uh, love in the air uh, with Paco Lopez. Uh, she's actually, if you look back, I, she she's back to back wins, and then she had a couple. She had a second. She had a third and a second. So she actually won her last four starts on dirt. Um, her last three losses have been all on turf. She's ten to one. She's run against some decent company. I don't know. I felt like this is what this is one of those horses. I feel like if I'm if I'm right on, she really wants to be on dirt, and she'll look like I should get every part of that ten to one, maybe a little less. She gets bet down a little bit, but her numbers fit well. Uh, the distant, the mile distance should be no issue. So I'm I'm, I'm going to go with Paco here. Eleven for twelve in the money is what stood out to me. So uh, when I see that, it's a horse I definitely have to keep. On my ticket, not on top for me though. The horse hasn't also hasn't raced in more than two months. And one thing I've learned uh, through doing this show and going back to when we used to do it together, uh, the horse has been racing at Parks and Penn National and Monmouth, and that was what scared me off a little bit. And that's probably where you're seeing that ten to one morning line uh, that we got from David Argona. Just breaking news here on the show. We're taping this Wednesday night, and the morning <laughs> lines just came out, but. Is that something? I mean, you said running with good company. Those uh, that doesn't scare you off. Not really. Um, she came back to be like her last race. She beat leader of the band, uh, who went off, I believe, a pretty heavy favorite in that race because leader of the band had just won a leader of the band had won a stakes race up at Saratoga uh, over the summer. So it, it, she run she ran against some pretty good horses. The layoff concerns me a little bit, but I. I don't know. I feel like they wouldn't be shipping her here if they if they didn't think that that she was ready. She does have six starts on the year, so I don't know. I feel like it was an op. There, there definitely was the opportunity already to shut her down for the year if they were going to. So she must be she must be looking okay if they're going to bring her back off of a a mini layoff here to to run her in December. So obviously, if you got a single, I'm going to have to try and convince you because I went five deep on this race and then singled in the next race and you spread yourself out a little bit in the next race so on top before i knew the bottom the morning lines i lo really liked number three battle bling grade three winner last time out uh, at aqueduct it was a field of five it was really a field of four because exotic west was in that race and lost the rider so you kind of almost crossed that off as a entry but this horse is eight for nine in the money in 2022 and the only race that this horse was out of the money was in a grade one behind Pauline's Pearl. When I like to go through these graded stakes races, I try to get a sense of like, who's my grade three horses? Who's my grade two horses? Um, there's no one really in the race that you can easily say is a grade two, grade three horse. So this one was kind of as close as I got. Uh, and I like battle bling on top. How come you didn't use battle bling? 
Uh, I thought about using Battle Blink. I think she's the next. She would be the next one I would use. Um, if well, I was gonna go, better. yeah. If I was gonna go deeper, I would definitely use her. My one hesitation about Battle Blink is I think she wants to go longer. I, I think this one mile distance might be a little short for her. Uh, also, her last race, she beat Nostalgic, who looked absolutely awful. I want to say it was two weekends ago. I. Uh, I'm trying to think of what race she she ran in. Oh, the com, yeah, when she ran in the Comley, it was it's actually last last week. She looked awful. So and not not fantastic. That that's how bad she looked out of that race. So kind of kind of a little hesitant on on how good that effort really was. But I she makes the most sense out of anybody here. Uh, I was just kind of looking for a little bit of a price as well. Uh, I figured Love in the Air would kind of be a little bit of a price, but I knew what I was using in the next leg, so I knew I had to. I kind of had to at least get a little bit, a little bit of value if I was going to use a couple of the favorites in the next leg. Yeah, and so that's exactly how I played this. You have a nice competitive field here i'm going to go longer in this field and single in the next so let's see what you think about my next horse number 10 bank sting this horse is six for eight at aqueduct three for five at the distance it's second off the layoff which i always like and joel rosario who's ridden this horse the last three times i'd argue uh three you know three very strong showings for this horse very consistent um i really like the fact that uh has had a lot of success over the aqueduct uh track Bank Sting number 10 I have on my ticket. You? Yeah. I didn't mind Bank Sting. Honestly, what scared me off was her last race uh, where she lost to November Rain. Um, I like November Rain as a horse, but she is a complete boomer bust horse in my opinion. So not a, in my opinion, like it's one of those horses that I kind of use as a benchmark because she either wins or she loses by a lot. So not fantastic that Bank Sting didn't catch her last time, but... She does. She has run against some good horses. I mean, she ran fourth in the Ruffian earlier this year, uh, which had some very good horses in Search Result, Royal Flag, Lady Rocket. So she's not a bad horse. Just, uh, I don't know. I would definitely rather, in my opinion, I'd rather use Battle Bling. I do like that Rosario has this mount. Uh, the mile distance definitely suits her. I just, I especially now lo really looking at the morning line here, I don't really see why she is... I mean, she's second. She's co-second choice here at four to one. Uh, not in, I, in my opinion, her numbers aren't anything super special, but you're going to get value there because she is four to one. You'll probably get every bit of four to one as long as there's not scratches in this field. Yeah, I mean, so, Brisbane at Prime Power has this horse number one. Obviously, the speed figures are there. The the um, performance at Aqueduct. I think all those are probably reasons that uh, that morning line is where it is. The other horse I liked was the eight Betsy blue for Linda Rice. This was kind of a pace play for me. I feel like there's a lot of early speed and I wanted to back myself up with a closer. This horse finished second to good night. Olive in June uh, is also six for nine at aqueduct. You can kind of see a trend with where I'm going on this race is finding the horses that have, although a lot of them, I mean, when you go back and you look and you're seeing like eight for nine in the money this year, 11 for 12 lifetime in the money, six for nine at aqueduct. Like these horses are all, this is a this is a good race. I think this is a really good race, and so it yeah definitely it's definitely a very good race. Um, I like Betsy uh, Betsy Blue. I actually I've I've bet on a couple times this year, and she's done pretty well for me. Just uh, I don't know if this is her distance. I I think she is more of a she's more of a sprinter. Uh, she definitely could win at this distance. She has before, but I think that in you know, a six to seven furlongs that 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 extra furlong might do her in. But as a pace play, it makes complete sense. Yeah, it was really the only one I found. I mean, kind of uh, as a closure that I'd want. Last on my ticket was the two def uh, exotic West. And to be honest, this was really a, I kind of threw this horse in last minute. Um, so I would consider this a defensive use for me. Last time out, the horse hit the gate and lost the rider. Uh, that was in the grade three at Aqueduct on November 4th, a race that actually Battle Bling ended up winning. Um, I saw Clarier, Malathat, um, courses cutting back in distance, speed figures are kind of all over the place. I don't know, I really had trouble deciphering the, the past performances with Exotic West. It's also going to Dylan Davis. Um, 
So to be honest, if you left this horse off, I wouldn't disagree <laughs> with you. Um, there was just something saying, add this horse. So tell me if I should leave Exotic West on my ticket. At the price, it makes sense. Uh, the horse has won la their last two races at a mile. Uh, so I, that's a good sign. I, the change to Davis isn't fantastic, but it, this is kind of the time of year where Davis starts winning a bunch of his races. Um, the, the winner is where he kind of builds up his, builds up his wins. So it makes sense. Am I, you know, the concern, but you're getting the value for is that the horse kind of is trending the long, wrong way. I mean, who, who's to say what would have happened if he didn't hit the gate last time out. Okay. Yeah. But even before that was seventh in the summer colony uh, behind leader of the band fourth in the shoe which uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that shoe was only a four horse field. I don't think it was yeah, a it was. Uh, yeah you're right yeah so you like last last in the shoe <laughs> yeah uh I it looked good at Pimlico okay I'm not crazy about horses who look fantastic at Pimlico so really like you kind of got to go all the way back to yeah, earlier this year at Aqueduct where this yeah. horse was doing the uh was doing her best running which is good because that's where we are um. So I mean for 20 to 1, yeah, I think especially since you're especially with the next leg being relatively short prices and probably one of those short prices is going to hit. So I I think it makes complete sense to use Exotic West here on a double. Uh especially if you have a little bit if if you do have a little bit more of a bankroll, you're in the green so you can you can do that. <laughs> I can spend the extra dollar because <laughs> I exactly singling in the cigar mile which is what we'll move on to race nine at aqueduct it was a field of seven but before we came on the air here it was breaking news about number five obesos there uh obesos was in the if you want to call it on the road trip asking when are we going to get there uh and got word that uh they had to scratch this horse because of the ehv1 outbreak at churchill so this horse now needs to return to churchill churchill um, hopefully all the horse horses turn out okay there, but there's a virus going around and I think they're basically going to be in quarantine. If you've been at Churchill for a little bit, I think I read there was 13 horses, um, maybe that have tested positive or there's 13 in the barn. Yeah, um, it was something like that, but yeah, the quarant has the quarantine. So unfortunately we won't get Obezos, but, uh, David Aragona are, had already updated the morning line reflecting that, and that's why you see the 99 to 1 morning line on Obezos. Yeah, so this is the grade uh, one cigar mile for three year olds and up. A field of six now, including two from this year's Kentucky Derby crop, White Abario in Zandon. Where are you going? I like the three, I like the two three year olds here with uh, Zandon White Abario. I, uh, I'm not super like this race came up competitive in my opinion. Uh, I was more competitive with Obezos. I mean, granted, not the strongest of grade one fields. Like if you're looking like for like consistency, but I think it's a very competitive field. I uh, I've liked Zandon all year. We finally get to see him try older horses. I've you know, I have not been the biggest fan of White Abario this year. Uh, that's not a secret. You go back and watch some of the videos on the Profits channel. But they have been pointing a Barrio here for months. Like this was the target. They knew they were they knew they were skipping. They knew they weren't gonna go to the Breeders' Cup. They were pointing here. Uh and they get Irad. I don't think Irad takes this mount if he doesn't think this horse is is good enough. So for that reason, I, I definitely wasn't going to leave White Abario off my ticket here either. Yeah, I decided to single Zandon, and I know you know Matt DeSantis and Sarah are going to always – I'm always going to hear them in the back of my mind, Zandon doesn't win, Zandon doesn't win. And that was the whole <laughs> talk when we when we let up, and we did this show on the, Pen, on the Pennsylvania Derby, right? And I remember I took Zandon. I think I might have even singled Zandon on that show as well. Um, and Zandon ran well. It just got beat by Taba. Well, Taba's not in here. And then you start looking at, you know, you start doing that comparing game, right? So if off the top of my head, I think the only races we've had to compare the three-year-olds to three-year-olds and up, right, is the, the Lucas with Rich Strike and Hot Rod Charlie in the duel there. Uh, the Breeders' yep. Cup Classic, which is kind of a toss because if you got, you're not going to compete with Life is Good and Flight Line. And uh, obviously Epicenter had the, the problem there. Um, Cyberknife. 
um, in the mile. Yeah. Um, so I don't think, and you know, the one I think that I'm taking the most out of was the Lucas with Rich Strike and Hot Red Charlie, and R Rich Strike held his own against that. So that makes me think that Zandon's going to be able to hold the own against these older horses are not, you know, they're not world beaters here. Um, mind control was the other one I was probably most likely to consider to put on my ticket. Um, but I think Zandon can finally break that. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to text Matt Santis as soon as uh, Zandon <laughs> gets across the wire first. The only concern, you know, is the, is the shorter distance for Zandon. Zandon's always a horse that kind of likes to obviously close late, always is very far back. Um, now you're cutting back on that distance. Uh, that makes me a little bit nervous, although it's a much smaller field than what Zandon has been used to. Zandon's running against 20, 11, 10 horse fields. Um, hopefully, uh, Ros um, Rosario can keep Zandon close, and I'll I'll go down with the ship on uh, singling Zandon here. I loved Wide Barrio earlier in the year, um, and he just hasn't done it for me outside of Gulfstream Park. So I'm gonna let him. Yep. Beat me outside Gulfstream, and then I'll jump back on the White Barrio train. Yeah, I probably should. I honestly probably. I mean, that's been my role the entire time is don't bet Safi outside of Gulfstream, <laughs> and like it's worked great this year. But yeah, I I really do like Zandon, and how Cyberknife ran in the in the Breeders' Cup definitely supports that. Like Zandon should be should run well here. I really liked how he ran in the Pennsylvania Derby. He ran. He ran a winning race. He just ran into a horse that is much like who is just better in, in Taba. So it, it wasn't a bad effort. You know, most years, in most years that trip wins that yeah. he got there. Um, so would not like he should win this race. And that's why he's even that's why he's even money. Um, the other horse I, I'm using just to kind of the cover myself because I, I did single the, a long shot in the first leg is get her number. Sayas has been on a tear lately, and mm -hmm. I it, this just seems like one of those like it's all you know it's not the strongest grade one field. This is one of those ones that Peter Miller just seems to win with his horses. I've never been a fan of this horse, but he's shipping he's shipping him here. Uh, something you know it's and I'm gonna get a decent price. Horse is probably gonna be third or fourth, third probably like co third, maybe fourth choice around with White Abario. So I'm I'm using the favorite with the the second with the third and fourth choices it looks like here because I think mind control takes money for sure but I I don't really want any part of mind control even though he loves New York <laughs> but he yeah. had the uh, he had the he got DQ'd I believe from his last start I don't know if that's in the PPs yet yeah uh, for testing he tested positive for something. It does it hard to play? I don't know. I, I can definitely I can see mind control winning. When he wins, he guts out wins. So it would it would be one of those type of wins at a short price. I don't want anything to do with him. I uh, just I'll let him beat me here. Yeah, and so and mind control is definitely a legit contender who I looked at very closely. I also like to forget her number, but the way I structured my ticket as a daily double, I just have to st take a stand and. And um, take an opinion because my payouts to Zandon, I'm going to check those probables as you get close to that race eight to check what the payouts are going to be, right? If one of those horses is paying $4 and my ticket costs five, I'm obviously going to take out uh, take out that, which might be the, the battle bling that we talked about. Um, right. So that's kind of where I decided, like, I'm going to take a stand, and I, I think Zandon – has a great shot here to finally get that win. The other thing I will mention about White Barrio, just for all you White Barrio fans, he has been lighting up the, the workouts. But that's kind of something where somewhere he has always performed really well is those workouts in the mornings. And if you look at back in his last three in November, since uh, you know he took some time off, hasn't raced for two months, but came back with 58 five furlongs, 59 five furlongs, 47 four furlongs. Um, he actually had a 46 in two. Uh, for four furlongs at the end of October, those are some pretty strong strong workouts. But uh, let's see it translate off to the out of the Gulfstream. Those are all at Gulfstream. Yeah, <laughs> I I think I honestly I I think if as long as White Barrio runs well here, I would be shocked if he doesn't go to the Pegasus after this. Yeah, I, I mean, think that is the 
that seemed I'm I'm guessing that's the goal, and I'm guessing if and I'm guessing that's why I get her number is here. I think if you know a couple of these horses, if they run well, that's that's probably the next target, including Zandon. Because I mean, without you know, we we're down. Uh, Flight lines retired. Epicenter is is re- I believe they retired him if they didn't already. He's I don't think he ever runs again. Well, he's certainly um, not running in January. Right, but like just for yeah, like th- like for older for that handicap division took a big hit this year. Um, I don't know about life is good. I forget what they said what they were doing with life is good. He's retired. Yeah. So you know he wins the he wins the Clark or he wins the cigar mile here, and then he uh, you know he goes to the Pegasus. He runs well there. All of a sudden, like we're looking at Zandon as the top horse in the handicap division because there's just nobody left. So, and I'd say I'm I'm excited for this uh, for this three year old where the the two year olds turn in three in January because I was pointing this out. I I follow I usually follow them pretty closely. There was only like a handful of horses going into. Uh, going into December of last year that were two year olds that had run uh triple digit uh br- uh brisnet speed figures or equibase speed figures, sorry. Uh there's only a handful and there is like double the amount this year for two year olds. So this two year old crop looks like it's gonna be a good one. So I you know, it could set up for a horse like Zandon to be the the leader of the older horse clubhouse just to get beat by a three year old next year in the classic. Yeah, and so you know, I have my Sunday uh, Monday show Derby prep briefing, and that's exactly what I've seen and following. I've I've followed the two year olds closer this year than I ever have, and you got some not only quality, you've got some excitement happening already. And I know people on Twitter want to say it's too early talking about who's your Philly, but what else are we going to talk to talk about November 30th with the two-year-olds? And don't forget also on Saturday, we got Julia Shining returning, who is the full sister to Malathad, who will be running in the Demoiselle, which I believe is race six on your cards. It is. Yeah, the she'll, be, race. she'll be a heavy, she'll be a heavy favorite. She will be, but that's what, you know, it's not for betting. It's what it's what's starting right. to create that excitement for next year. Right. So oh yeah. Do it, who's your Philly versus Julia Shining. Like, you know that's yeah, going to be good. <laughs> if we, I, it's one of those matchups that you hope we get, and you hope we, you hope we get it when it's like a top tier race. You'd hate to see them like both kind of like trickle off, and then they're running in like the allowance race, like on the undercard. Yeah. You know, because it seems like every year there's always that race on like Derby Day that is like, like the horses that everybody thought was gonna, <laughs> were going to be good, and they're running in a, they're running in like a like an eighty five thousand dollar allowance because they didn't live up to expectations. And every year that race seems to have like a bomb win, like and it's Messier? like yeah, that's yeah, it's like yeah, that's it's like yeah, that's fitting. It's just like every, every yeah, because what even like this year, yeah, you had what Messier on the undercard of the uh, of the Breeders' Cup on Saturday, yeah, it, yeah, it's like you know smoked. like. Yeah, every year it seems like there's a race like that on big days where it's filled like it's the big race, and then there's the the like the allowance race that's filled with the horses that everybody thought would be there. <laughs> so hopefully that matchup, if we ever get it, is is in a grade one or grade two or something. And in the Remsen, you had a horse named Arctic Arrogance who you liked, right? Yeah, I liked I I did like Arctic Arrogance. Uh, just a, he's been on my. I've been on my list. I know Linda Rice isn't really known for the the Derby the Derby preps. Uh did have Max Player a couple years ago that that ran very well and then was taken away from her for the Derby. But uh yeah, I I like the horse's pedigree. The horse has only ever run against New York bred. Should get a decent price on on Arctic Arrogance. I didn't see them I didn't look at that morning line. I don't know if you have it up. But uh, uh two to one. Two to one. Okay, so not and really taking Tuskegee, anybody. Tuskegee Airmen with Louis Saez up at eight to five. Eight to five. Yeah, Tuskegee Airmen's a, Tuskegee Airmen's another one that's been on my list. Um, I've kind of been. I got a list of horses that are on that Derby, uh, on the Derby pool, and a horse hor, list of horses that aren't on the Derby pool. Um, and Tuskegee Airmen's on the dirt was on Derby pool too. Arctic Arrogance wasn't. So between those two, we'll see who. 
we'll see who wins. I I did I do like Tuskegee Airmen uh, as a horse though, but yeah, I I think the I think Arctic Arrogance. I'm kind of curious to see, more curious to see how he does, uh, considering he's only ever run against New York Company before. Good stuff. We're getting back into two year olds. We'll love to have you back on prep <laughs> briefing. Good to see you again, Vinny. Again, we did the Aqueduct uh, Daily Double on Saturday, December 3rd. I can't believe I'm saying December, race eight and nine. I went one, two, three, eight, ten with the two. That's a $5 bet. Vinny singled the one in the first leg and went two, three, four in the second leg, a $3 bet. As we say, Vinny, they can't blame us if they are wrong because we are not a, uh, well, we're only costing them a coffee. <laughs> yeah, eight it cost me eight bucks. <laughs> That's it. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me again.